Welcome to another model building workshop and today we're going to continue with the Mirage F1C and uh, these are the decals sheet that I picked up from print scale with some various markings for this kit like Iraq, Iran, Morocco, Spain, etc. So working on the Airfix kit here, this is where we left off, got the wings on and I'm starting to work on the nose cone which seems to be the bugbear of this model kit because it had a lot of uh, extra flash basically coming out of the the opening here which I thought because it was so cleanly made I thought it was supposed to go help as an attachment feature to the plane but it, it wasn't which it was is this extra plastic ring that I had to remove and now I'm trying to scrape out the inside of this cone because it's got to fit on here and it really does not want to so this is turning into the frustrating part so far so I'm taking an exacto blade and I'm trying to carve out and it's the cent it's not even that well centered either so it's slightly off centered and I'm trying to carve out the inside of this cone so that I can get that onto the front of this aircraft. I'm really glad I didn't look to this as being the option to put the uh, the weight in it because uh, <laughs> this is becoming a, a carving episode now. So I'm not sure I'm going to adjust this because I'm going to make sure this fits in cleanly. It's going to go on an angle. Because when we left off, I was rather uh, enthused at how well it was going together. Uh, and it may still, but this particular feature is... Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, we're close. Keep scraping it down. We're getting a lot closer now because it's almost going on. So for those who are looking at this for kids, I mean, so far this was great for kids. And the weight issue, you could alleviate that if you just put the landing gear in the flying mode, put it up. Uh, although it doesn't show you how to do that in the instruction sheet. Oddly, they usually show you how to do both. Although in this case, it's just a... Yeah, it's a couple of doors. It wouldn't be hard to put this in flying mode at all. Uh, anyhow, so I'm going to continue to uh, carve this out. Of course, I kind of had plastic shards and dust all over the place. Janet will love me for this. since I kind of jumped right in without an introduction. We are doing this from the Smith Hill Library in Providence. This is our virtual program, which we've been doing for a while. We are starting to do this program for youth again at the library. So if anybody's in Rhode Island, we're doing it Thursday afternoons, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Or, or daylight savings time, I guess. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I know I've got a couple of kids doing this. Of course, we haven't got to this stage yet. We're doing, uh, at the moment, we're doing single engine propeller planes, basically like the World War II fighters. We're doing that with the kids right now. Okay, so it's almost there. It's really close. You can see that. It's still fighting me though. But it goes to show you, you know, that expect the unexpected with model kits and sometimes you could be going along really smoothly and then suddenly come up across something that's going to shake you up a bit. So, and this is just a case of 
bit of patience and scraping out the nose cone. There's going to be enough plastic lying around here to build another airplane, I think. <laughs> Maybe not, but <laughs> exaggerated tad, huh? All right, so. And something else I've noticed too, which you can see here, is that there's a lot you're going to be able to see of that cockpit. So I'm going to have to be really careful of touching up the paint on that because you're definitely going to see it. Instrument panel, not so much. It's there, but the pilot and the seat, you know, you really can see it. So that's something I'll have to pay attention to as I go forward with other modern aircraft kits. And one of the things that with that is with World War II planes, I'm so used to these, uh, if they're referred to as birdcage type uh, cockpit designs and window designs, so there's so many uh, metal bracing or whatever. With the window panels, because the glass is a little different then. Till they got to the end of the wall with a bubble top, so you don't really see as much because you get all of that framework. But now it's like no framework, very little, which gives them good visibility, but it also gives us good visibility to the cockpit. Something to think about when you do the detail. An interior painting. Uh, all right, I'm gonna probably have to put. Okay, I think I pretty much have it now. I'm gonna glue it later because I want to make sure I get this lined up correctly. I mean, it's there. I don't know how the angle is supposed to be. And I don't want to spend the entire episode here just doing this. But I wanted you to know that this is an issue, at least with the pick, the one I picked up. Uh, so something to think about. And yes, there are other model manufacturers that have done the Mirage F1. So you have choices. This is the Airfix kit, which is still around. But I think Hazagawa's got one. I think a few other people have them too. So, but I have a, an older Airfix one. Basically, as some of you that have been watching this series I've been doing for the library, the model building workshops here, probably picked up on the fact that I tend to like to go to hobby shops or antique stores and find you know, some old, uh, cheaper kits like this one and see what I can do with them. And part of it's nostalgia, too, because this is the type of stuff I grew up with, and it's kind of fun. But I'm also looking for bargains because as we're doing programs here in the library with kids, I prefer getting some of these older, easy to build, affordable models. You know, it's what we're all about here. Because I, I can't grab some of these new mega kits that are like $50 a pop and have a gazillion pieces in them because that's just not going to fly here at all. So, all right. Uh, what else can we do today? We have a lot of hull detail. Hull. Fuselage details. <laughs> Keep calling it a hull. I'm working on tanks too long. Um, all right, let's take a look at some of these other vents and so forth. There's a lot of things there. There's the landing gear, which looks um, honestly it looks stressful. <laughs> so I'll have to think about that. And more of the uh, underwing assemblies. So we'll try a few different things. Okay. I got the uh, stabilizers to figure out. A little nervous about doing that right now because I think I'm going to have to fit those and let them set and let this thing sit for quite a while. So I'll hold off on that just for the sake of the program so that we can be working on something. Okay. Another challenge is since the wings are so tiny, it's kind of hard to prop this thing up on something so that I can work underneath. You still aircraft have longer wingspans than this. Uh, it looks like these are like air brakes, I think. I'm going to try to put those on. You can see this. Some of these features here underneath. 
take a look at some of that. Where's the numbers? There they are. 22 and 23. Okay, there's one of them here. It's got some indentations in the part. Got the impression that a newer model of this feature would probably have better detail. This looks like someone just kind of pressed something into the plastic to make it look like it's got some detail, but no, it doesn't look bad actually. But I'm sure the the real Piece with, on the actual plane, it's got more going on than this does. All right, it shows you can have these things slightly lowered. I don't know if I want to bother doing that since there's no supporting bracket to help you with that. A little as it since it pops in so nicely, it just kind of oops did pop in. <laughs> I think I'm gonna just put it down and leave it alone. But you could pose these in different positions if you so desired. I'm looking at the if it's not broke, don't fix it attitude here. Because that perforated might be upside down. Hard to tell if it is. It's not much of a design to work with here. Yeah, I'm actually part of that. Anyway, I don't know if you can all see that, but yeah, probably not. <laughs> but there is a uh, perforated pattern there over here. But yeah, it's kind of hinted. I'll put the other one on and then we'll take a look at some other stuff. I'm checking the clock, make sure I'm running okay. Got a little bit of downtime to work with today, but not a lot. We're a public library, we got a lot of things going on. Gotta get back on the main floor, help out the public, and then we've got an art program going on this afternoon. So there's all kinds of things happening at a, at a small public library like, like ours. Anybody who's in the Rhode Island area, feel free to stop by. We are the Smith Hill Library here in Providence, 31 Candace Street, 02908. We're in the Smith Hill neighborhood, right by the State Capitol building. I want you to make a trip and go see that too, because that's magnificent. And we've been doing some virtual tours of that. We've been with, working with the State House here at the library offering virtual tours of that beautiful building. And through July of 2020, we are going to have the statue of Roger Williams, or a statue of Roger Williams here at the building. You can come in and Take a selfie with our founder, Roger Williams. I guess it goes that way. Yeah, seems to fit. I'm gonna leave it leave it as is because it could be a little more <laughs> descriptive piece there. All right, it's got these two other fins that I don't quite understand where they're supposed to go. 
Oh, it's got too little. Well, we can attempt that. Uh, oh. That could be better. Sorry, I'm kind of arguing with the uh, instruction sheet. It shows these two um, fins that go underneath the fuselage. Look at all these parts, I don't know which ones those are. 21 and 20, huh? No, oh, okay, it is these right here. So these are some sort of fins for underneath the fuselage. Oof, I'm not a big fan of how this is done. All right, so what I'm complaining about is it shows that these fins go underneath the fuselage. And it indicates that there are two pins that are supposed to glue into two little holes on the aircraft. But the way this thing was attached to the tree, there really isn't a pin to really work with as such because you're going to cut them off. Yeah, you cut them off as soon as you take it off the tree. So I'm going to have to fit this kind of a without the uh, pins. Let's see how it goes. And for those of you out there that, that really know jet aviation, feel free to put some comments down as to what some of these parts are actually called. Because I am way behind the eight ball on uh, modern aircraft. So that goes under here. Actually, I think it goes the other way around. It goes on the table. <laughs> it's supposed to go like so. Yeah. All right, let's attempt that. It's going to work fine. I just had to pick a, pick a spot and kind of commit to it. That's the right angle. I don't have a lot to go on. No, you wouldn't. Yes. Let's try the other one. This is kind of running a little longer than I want today. I'll do a little bit more, but not a whole lot. I'll try and get that one on there, and then we'll move on to something else. But let me uh, pause while we uh, cut these parts out. Okay, so I've got those on there on the back. And I'll put, start getting some of the uh, landing gear on. I'm going to start with a nose wheel. That might be it for what I do today. Put the 
this part in there. Get that to sit right. Let me get a straight angle here. All right, so you have an option of the underwing stores, you know, here's an example of the bomb, there will be four of these on a rack underneath, uh, which I think I'm going to go with that because it that's, looks like it's going to have a lot of extra color there, you know, because you're going to have the bomb rack and you're going to have four bombs, which I think are in olive green, some kind of a dark green, so there'll be four of those, and then I've got the pylons to put on, uh, so that would mean that the... Uh, this to dry a little bit. The uh, could use the extra tank, the big one. This is the center line tank that would go here. Oops, sorry. But I think, like I said, I think I'm going to opt with the bomb rack instead of this one. But there'll be two other uh, pylons that'll have other wing tanks. So you have an option for the, uh, the tip of the wing. You could put on this pylon on the end here and you could mount the air to air, to, air to air missiles if you so desire it would go on the end here I may opt to do that or I may leave that off and just make that a bomber in which case you would just file down these pins that are here you just file that down if you're not going to use the, uh, the pylons so and then, you know, I've got the stabilizers to put on, that nose cone, which we were talking about earlier. Anyway, it's starting to take shape, and generally it goes together pretty well, except for that nose cone. Everything else was pretty good. Uh, these fins could have had the pins better to put them on, but you can line them up pretty well. Hopefully I did. And I followed the diagrams and the instructions to get the angle. That needed to be there. So it's so far, it's not a it's not a bad kit. Other than that, that nose cone needed a lot of work. Uh, I haven't finished it, so I'm not sure if there'll be more things to worry about. But we're at the point now where you know I got the bomb rack and I've got uh, the choice of uh, underwing stores. So looks like I think yeah. So there's two wing tanks or or missiles. That's interesting too. Do, do you go with the missiles here? Do you go with these or with these tanks on the wings? I'll have to figure that out. All right, I think that'll wrap it up for today. So, hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.